Would you like to see some of the best of Ireland in two weeks and how to do it? Let's show you. As we go along, we will include simple things that we hope will make your journey easier. We know many of our visitors struggle with planning itineraries and try to push too much into a single day. In this video, we will take you with us on a 14-day trip through Ireland and give you an idea of the time it takes to get around without exhaustion. Welcome back to the channel. The first thing to do is once you know where you want to stay, book your accommodation in advance. Deciding your length of stay is important as in the peak season, April to October, hotels will be busy. Dublin hotels in particular if there are major sporting or music events on in the capital. Book rooms directly with the hotel and get an email confirmation. It can and will be generally cheaper. Booking sites charge a fee to the hotel. The second thing you should list is the places you can't be in Ireland without seeing. Most people from outside Ireland have no idea of distances in Ireland and tend to think we have major routes like freeways in the United States. And it's easy to travel 400 miles on a freeway. And while we do have motorways connecting major cities once you go off them through small villages with winding narrow roads, it does take time. Let's show you how easy it is to see the best places. And as we have done this ourselves, we know the frustration of your lack of timing and distance awareness. At the end, we will include maps with journey times to help you plan. Let's start at how to arrive in Ireland. There are the three main airports, Shannon, Dublin and Belfast. For this 14-day holiday, we will fly into Dublin Airport. Dublin Airport to the city centre will take up to an hour and the cheapest way is by bus. Like any airport, you can hire a car easily. Once you are settled in the sites best to see are on the hop on hop off bus routes. They do the main attractions. Allow a day to see the Dublin sites and possibly two if you are jet lagged. Dublin is not a big city and a lot of the sites in the city are walkable. Because we drive on the left of the road here, it's important crossing a road to look right for traffic instead of left. Lots of people new here do get caught out with that simple one. As in all major cities, also be aware of pickpockets and use common sense in looking after your phone and valuables. Please use your common sense. Dublin is a safe city generally, but unfortunately that needs to be said. By the way, if you are enjoying our videos, please share, hit the bell and follow us as we travel Ireland. We have ourselves and two cats to feed. Thank you so, so much. There is also a decent public transport system of bus and trams. A leap card is useful for getting around. We have another video of that on the channel. Buy at any newsagents. We drive on the left and it's not difficult to get used to it. The motorways have tolls in the Republic, which your car hire company should sort for you. There are no tolls in the North. If you need to pay a toll, it's cash or in some cases, credit debit card. Out of Dublin, we will take a journey southwards to beautiful Glendalough in the Wicklow National Park, the Garden of Ireland, only an hour and a half away. For walkers, it's a paradise close to nature and the wildlife of the valley. After a morning walking in Glendalough, you can travel onwards to Kilkenny, roughly one and a half hours drive away. By train, Kilkenny will be directly out of Houston Station, Dublin. Explore Kilkenny Castle, pick any hotel and stay the night. The following day, have breakfast and head off to Killarney. Again, Killarney is a stop on the Cork Line out of Houston Station, Dublin. Scott's Hotel is one we can recommend here. Visit the National Park on a jaunting car where you will be enthralled by the driver's tales. That's a horse and carriage to most people. Go into Muckross Abbey and see how the monks lived centuries ago. Eat in the town's many fine restaurants and the following day take the road to Kenmare, either over the mountains or the flat road through the valley. 40 minutes later you arrive in Kenmare. Book into the Lansdowne or Park Hotels or Foley's and explore. Eat in Mulcahy's fine restaurant in the evening. Have a pint and a sing-song in Peter Crowley's famous pub. Explore the arts and craft shops. The following day, head off to Mizzenhead, the most southerly part of Ireland, which takes two hours driving, but Mizzenhead is stunning. Worth the day there and the small coves and beaches along the way. We will have a list of max distances and drive times at the end. Before you leave Kenmare, buy a hard copy map or download Google Maps. Sat-navs don't always work where we are going. After Kenmare over to Valencia Island takes nearly two hours drive, but you will take longer as the views around Cagar Daniel will stop you in your tracks. But you can also travel to Dingle and that will take you two hours also. 
Our choice would be a night in the Royal Hotel Valencia Island, where Queen Victoria's Consort Prince Albert's toilet sits in the entrance hall. We are a mine of useless information here. Stay with us, more useful stuff to come. You should also allow some walking time to reach many of the tourist spots. Car parking can be a distance from the viewing platform. Explore Valencia Island, the transatlantic cable experience, the Bray Head Tower, the Slate Quarry views. If you choose Dingle, we recommend the Slee Head Road. It will take about three hours to drive and it brings you back to Dingle Town. There are loads of places to stop along the way, of course. If you stay overnight in either Valencia or Dingle the following day, drive up the coast and go straight to Doolin. And on the way there, call into the visitor center of the main visitor attraction in Ireland at the Cliffs of Moher. If you prefer a less tourist-type experience, there is a viewpoint close to the main center where the views are just as special but not connected to the main visitor center. Ideal for hikers. Spend an hour there and then on to Doolin. It will take up to four hours driving depending on your starting point, either Valencia or Dingle. Doolin is a small village, but it has the ferry to the Aran Islands. The Aran Islands are worth exploring, and we would recommend a couple of days there. The ferry takes only 40 minutes, the Irish language is the native tongue, and you will never have heard the beauty of it in such a setting. The main hotel has its own separate cabins on the hillside overlooking the harbor, and there are a few beautiful bed and breakfasts. Look for Michael, one of the local taxi drivers you will find on the pier, and get Michael to give you a tour of the island. You will love it. We have more great sights coming up. We hope you are enjoying our journey. Leaving Doolin, it takes an hour and a half to get to Galway City. Arriving in Galway, be prepared for roundabouts and traffic. It's a friendly, lively young city with a population of 90,000. The university has 20,000 students and the pubs are usually hopping. Galway has hotels in all price ranges. We've found the cheapest to be Travel Lodge Plus on the Chewham Road. A lovely hotel and friendly staff. At this point, Connemara is on your doorstep. The National Park, one of seven in Ireland, is stunning. Galway is worth spending at least three days exploring. The capital town of Connemara is Clifton, and either drive there by the scenic coast road of directly on the N69. The Sky Road Coastal Routes is one of the most scenic ways to see Connemara. There is also Kylemore Abbey, built in 1868, where you could spend at least an afternoon, and you can also eat there too. They have a great restaurant. We will then take you all the way up through Westport to Akhill Island. Keen Beach is one of the highlights of this island. It's joined by the Michael Davitt Bridge to the mainland. The Banshees of Inishurin was filmed here some years ago. Have a swim and enjoy. Akhill has a few hotels, but probably it's advisable to book in advance as we would advise with all our stops along the way, as we said earlier. You should now be a seasoned traveler. Depending on your length of stay in each place, you should have 14 days filled in. Time to travel back to Dublin to fly out. This journey will take around four hours and probably a night in Dublin to relax. If you can get down to Westport, the train there will take you back to Dublin. And that takes four hours as well. Visit some of our finest pubs, chill and enjoy the ambience. That's it for this one. We hope you enjoyed it and you will join us in the next one up there as we travel Ireland beyond the pale in Dublin. Please leave any comments. We love to hear from you. Please like and share. Thank you. Take care.